Following my father's death in World War II, my mother moved back to North Dakota, where I was raised by my maternal grandparents, William and Iva Bennett, and eventually adopted. I was introduced to wrestling while attending Jamestown High School, where I was a member of the inaugural team. The very first wrestling match that either I or any of my teammates witnessed was the very first duel we were in. I had a good senior year. I looked at Iowa State, had an appointment to the Air Force Academy, a scholarship offer from Columbia, then Don Klostrake called. So now I was off to Jamestown College. While I was there, I lettered in football and wrestling, managed to place in the conference tournament and qualify for the NAI Nationals. Coach Klostrake taught me a lot more than technique. He coached straight to the heart of an athlete. He, he taught me to believe in myself. He, he taught me that hard work had its own reward. He taught me that leave it all on the mat and you'll never have any regrets. And most importantly, he taught me how to lead quietly by example. Coach Klostrike decided to leave and coach high school. So I transferred to Pacific University where I finished my wrestling career. I got my bachelor's degree, my doctorate of optometry. After continued education, I eventually settled into Kenilworth, Washington in joint practice with ophthalmology. I was busy in the practice as primary surgical assistant for the ophthalmologist. I was specializing in bandage and, and therapeutic contact lenses as well as keratoconus. Despite it all, I never got out of wrestling. Over the next 20 plus years, I was a volunteer assistant and head coach at five different high schools. I became real close friends in the Tri-Cities with Daryl Keller, and together we coached at two different high schools. It was great because one thing is, is he knew what he was talking about, and, and we connected because we both were uh, dedicated wrestlers ourselves. I started a club, sanctioned first by USWF and then USA Wrestling, and along with the Kellers, began to do instructional and educational videos on technique, featuring some of the elite coaches like Bobby Douglas, Joe C., great athletes like John Smith. I went out and did him a clinic um, right at his house. Uh, and what's interesting about that story is I was injured at that time, and it was in 87. It was my first uh, uh, world championship. And uh, as I was out there working with the kids, uh, he took great care of me, nursed me back to health before I went and actually made the team about a month later. Through Bobby and Joe, I was introduced to Art Martori and Sunkiss Kids, and I began to take on a new role doing scouting video and technical analysis. He's one of these unsung heroes. He's worked in the sport most of his life, dedicated himself, and he's touched so many of us uh, without a lot of fanfare. Evaluating uh, the wrestlers, uh, breaking down the films, scouting, we did everything. And uh, without Dave, the American Wrestling Program would not have been nearly as successful as it was. USA Wrestling approached me about getting a stronger presence on television. Then I met Doug Brooker and a lifelong friendship began. I would produce, he would direct, I would edit. Dave Bennett and I have worked together over 25 years on numerous television and video projects for USA Wrestling. Events have been broadcast nationally on ESPN and Fox Sports. Jim Shear hired me as director of broadcasting for USA Wrestling. I gave up eye care and became fully entrenched in the world of wrestling. He has produced more than 50, 60 instructional videos that I have given to our officials in the United States and to Olympic officials. His videos are the best in the world. We've been able to accomplish a lot of things through the video, uh, the, the uh, developmental videos, the uh, national syllabus, uh, the action shots. Uh, there's just not very many people that have the knowledge base that he has. In 2000, Rich Bender asked me if I'd be interested in adding the National Developmental Freestyle Coaching job to my role. My heart had always been in coaching, so it was an easy decision. Coaching is, has always been important to him, and he's achieved at the very highest level and respected around the world as one of the top coaches on the planet. It was never about him. He's an outstanding technician. He's a great leader. He works well with individuals, and he has made a difference in the athletes in the United States today. The United States Olympic Committee every year gives out an award for someone who uses science and technology to improve athlete performance. And the Olympic Committee selected him, the only wrestler to ever win this prestigious award. In 2004, I brought in Angel Cejudo, and he informed me that Henry wanted to come too. 
Henry was still in high school, having just completed his sophomore year. I talked to Rich Bender. He said if I can sell it to the OTC, it was fine with him. And using Apollo Ono as an example, I did that, and Henry came to the Olympic Training Center. Doc was not only a coach, but, but, but a parent, a father, a mentor. And sometimes he would hug me, and sometimes he would kick my butt. <laughs> so he just, he, he knew how to handle me. And I think when I won the Olympics, um, you know, and, and I told this to Doc, it's like, man, Doc, I really couldn't do it without you. The years I spent coaching with Kevin Jackson, Lincoln McAravey, and Terry Brands at the Olympic Training Center were not only a privilege, but some of the best years of my life. He did some things that, that are, are still mind-blowing to me as far as the way that he was able to communicate with the athletes and knowing where their strengths were, knowing where their weaknesses were, and how to talk them through those things, you know, how to talk to them about maybe something that needed to be fixed. Doc's always had sort of two sides to him. One side he loves to teach and one side he loves to learn and, and that's a great environment to be in and a great person to be around. He's always teaching and he's always learning and, and that's exciting. He really was my right hand man. He really was um, a assistant national teams coach. Uh, he aided us in training, the structure, uh, the plan, uh, the competition plan as well as the training plan. If he could help anybody, the, the best kid in the room, the worst kid in the room, Anybody in between, he was always there um, encouraging and, and adding to what they had. And uh, that's something that I've tried to emulate. It's important that you have the right woman in your life. And I met Georgia Brown, sweet Georgia Brown, when I was a freshman at Jamestown College. And 52 years later, we're still together. She has been a rock. She's been the foundation for everything I've done. We were blessed with two sons, Sean, who's now past, and Squire. They've been two of the biggest joys of my life. To be inducted in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame is something that uh, is humbling, honoring, and unexpected. But I think to know that when I'm gone, I'm going to be there with friends and colleagues is something that's hard to express and put into words.